Hello everyone, my name is Jamila and I am an illustrator. I also have a Patreon account where I share Photoshop files and all kinds of things with people who support my art. And if you want to become one of them, just click the link in the description below. So, in today's video we are going to talk about my coloring process in Photoshop. Um, it's also called cell shading because part of it is the technique that is used in cell animation like um, anime which I watched a lot of when I was younger, so I'm inspired by it, and I use this coloring technique for my illustrations. In the video you might see some cuts here and there, I didn't want to make it too long, so I just cut some parts that are not as important. I recorded each part of the process so that I can walk you through it, the rest is just repetition that I cut out. So now you can see that I've already put down all my base colors. I have one layer for each element, like for the skin, clothing, hair, um, different elements of the clothing, so that I can just change the colors if I need to. And on top of that I've added a multiply layer with the shadow color in it. I have used a very light color and I just put that down in the shape of the silhouette of my character. For this one, I knew that I wanted to have more shadow than light, so I filled the whole silhouette of the figure with a shadow color and I just erased out the parts that I wanted to be light. After I'm done with this, I add a second shadow layer, which is a little bit lighter, it's not as strong, and that's just to give some more dimension to the shadow areas, so that I can define the form some more. And here you can see I am using the opposite approach, I am painting in the shadow areas. It always depends on what's quicker, you know, if you know that you're gonna have little shadow areas compared to the light, you just paint in the shadows, and if you have little light areas, you just fill everything with a shadow and erase out the light. It's all about efficiency, I guess. So this could be kind of treated as an occlusion shadow pass, the second one that I'm doing. Mm, I like this process because it, it just gives a very clear separation between light and shadow. And that's at the same time what makes it difficult. It's hard to place the shadows in a way that they look correct. I'm not saying that I do it correctly all the time, but I use reference for my poses. I've talked about that before. And I use reference for the shadows at the same time. So when I take a pose and take a picture of myself to get it right, I pay attention to the light source as well. For this kind of coloring technique, to me, it's very important that I have a clear light source. So I just probably had my window to the right, so yeah, the image is flipped, so it's the left of uh, the character. And I just made sure that I liked the lighting direction and where the light fell. This approach is very good for dramatic lighting. I think, especially if you have more darker parts and just some spots of light, you can direct the viewer to where you want them to look, and that gives kind of cool effects. Mm, I like this also because it's more like drawing than painting. I used to paint everything in the past, I used to render everything smoothly, but now I just like this clear separation of the different elements and the fact that I can change it all afterwards. Once I am done with the shadow layers, I turn them off and I go to the base layers. Um, especially the skin, I like adding a little bit of red hue around the nose, cheeks, ears, um, lips, so that it just gives a little bit more life to the character and a little bit of blue around the eyes. And of course, <laughs> put in the eye color and the white of the eyeball. You don't want that to be skin colored. And to check if I like it, I always turn on my shadow layers again. I put them in a folder just to keep everything organized and I can turn them off and on to see if I like that. Also, what I use a lot is hue saturation. I just put down a color and if I don't really like it, I press Ctrl U and I can just manipulate it. I can make it lighter, darker, change the hue, saturation and all that. 
So once I have that down, the base color variation, I just tweak the base colors a little bit, the shadow colors, um, just to bring it to a place where I am happy with the color palette. And it's, yeah, it's very flexible. You can do all this stuff up until the very end. You can just change it. You can also just tweak the color scheme completely if you want to. So when I'm happy with the character, so far I move on to the background. I have added some water in there just to make it more interesting. I haven't really talked about clipping masks. I use those all the time. I have the base layer of the, my water and I create another layer on top and I create a clipping mask to clip that to the layer so it won't go over the edge. So uh, the way you do that is you right click and then there's an option to make it a clipping mask and you do that. Yeah, and I just paint it in light and dark. Once I'm done with this step, once I have all my lights, all my darks, all my base color variation, I move on to gradients. So up until now everything is kind of harsh and the separations are very clear. To just soften it up a bit I use big brushes, the standard big round fuzzy brush in Photoshop. And I just add some gradients to the background. Uh, oh yeah, another important step for me is to color in the line art. Uh, in the beginning I always have a dark grey or even black, but once I have all the shadows, my whole color palette established, I go in and again I'm using a clipping mask or more clipping masks. Uh, I clip those to my lines layer and I just paint in different colors. I use a pinkish color for the skin, a bluish color for the hair and white or light blue for the white clothing, just to give it some more variation and dimension. Yeah, in general I always use the approach that is the least destructive, I guess. I don't want to change my base layers, I don't want to change my lines layer, so I always use those clipping masks to change the colors and I can always turn them off and on if I want to. Again, now I'm adding more gradients to my base colors just to make it softer, give it some more dimension where it falls into shadow, I just make it darker, but I don't really want you to see that effect too clearly. I want you to feel it, if that makes sense. So if it's too strong, if it's too visible, I turn it down. And once that is done, I move on to my favorite part, <laughs> going crazy with layer modes. Um, you know, all those different things like soft light, overlay, color dodge, screen. I use all of these with big soft brushes and I just give it a bit more shine, more effect, like a glowing effect I guess. I'm using a light blue for the water and for her hair and clothing and for the skin to make that glow I'm using kind of a pinkish orange very light color on soft light or overlay mode. And lastly, maybe not lastly, but <laughs> towards the very end, I noticed that I didn't really like the hair. It looked too hard in a way. Um, so I added just some single strands of hair to break up the shapes a little bit more. And I've also used a screen layer to just break up her silhouette a little bit. It was very, very dark against the background and I wanted to smooth out that transition just a little bit more. Again, darkening some areas, lighting up some areas. Um, I like using gradient maps in the very end because even though I'm pretty happy with my color scheme that I've established, I s always think maybe I can improve something and oftentimes I end up keeping the gradient map, I just use it either on a very low opacity on soft light or just very low opacity on a normal layer to just give some color variation and here I think I added a bit more warmth to it. And in the end I just applied a levels adjustment to just make it a little bit brighter. Mm. After all it's anime fan art and I like it to just pop a little bit more.
So, yeah, that's pretty much how I color all my illustrations in Photoshop. I hope this was helpful for you guys, and if you have any questions, anything you didn't see or didn't understand, just leave a comment, and thank you for watching. Bye!